Good morning. Welcome to the Long Live Alternative Parties podcast. Free Press Media Press Inc. and Alternative Parties Books Publisher sponsors this podcast. I'm Andrew Bouchard. Welcome to the Long Live Alternative Parties podcast. Today, friends, we have another exciting guest on our podcast. His name is Joshua Rodriguez, and he's running for office. And he's going to talk to us about his party and the office he's running for. So welcome to the podcast, Joshua. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it so much. We're glad to have you, Joshua. Joshua, kindly give us an introduction to yourself, a brief biographical sketch. Yeah, my name is Joshua. I'm a candidate for uh, President of the United States, and I'm running with the Libertarian Party. Um, A little bit about my background, undergraduate degree in biochemistry, graduate school in chemistry, and uh, a long-time community service. So uh, I was part of the the Jefferson County School Safety and Security Task Force that uh, was convened after the Parkland shooting in 2018. Um, was part of, uh, school, the school safety was one in, at the county, and then I did a lot of work at, at the city level with, like, uh, land development code update as, on the, their advisory committee. Another position on the county was, uh, the food safety, or this food, uh, integrated food task force after a COVID nonprofit operator for half a decade, um, benefiting, uh, homeless and at risk youth. Okay. Um, that's a little bit of quick about me. I uh, ran for uh, mayor in 2018 and United States Senate in uh, 2020. And so 2024, I'm running for uh, president this time around. Sounds good. So tell us our audience what city you're living in. Um, I'm out of Colorado in, in Denver area. Okay. So you mentioned that you guys are doing chemistry. How has that informed your politics? Yeah, I think it, it greatly does. Uh, when we think about things about uh, energy resources, right? So a lot of folks talk about um, the finite resources of uh, fossil fuels. Well, when we think about batteries and car batteries, um, you know, that's also a finite resource. And so uh, those metals are going to become increasingly rare. And so when we think about the year 2050, We'll probably run out of materials just for electric vehicles. So, you know, things like what's the next energy um, resource available to us and those sorts of things. Um, but when we look at uh, things like curing cancer, you know, my I'm motivated to end war and cure cancer. And so as a scientist, those are the sorts of things that interest me and I think I find important. Um, so I think it's influenced uh, my candidacy in that, that particular way. Okay. And how about your past races? How what did you learn from them that you're going to bring into this race? Yeah, I I think at the local level, I think when people think federally about all the issues that come with uh, um, that tor- that sort of environment, um, a lot of people really consider uh, local issues still more important. And so, um, you know, uh, health and safety is probably one of my number one priorities. But you learn a lot going to community meetings and uh, working with community members on what's really important to them. And so I think that's a little bit of the, the flavors that uh, will be built into my candidacy. Okay. Can we tell our audience what your platform consists of? What are some of the major things in your platform? Yeah, I do encourage people to visit my uh, website, Joshua for Unity, Joshua okay. F-O-R Unity, and get a little bit, um a better take on you know my my background and my platform um but one of the things that you know i care about is you know things like worker rights uh when we think about people working 10 hours a day 14 hours a day and having come in having to come in uh the next day right you you, uh you work hard uh you bust your butt and uh you know you you have to go back and come in back to work within five hours you know those sorts of things. And so when we think about wage and, you know, fair compensation, um, those sorts of issues, you know, those, those are the sorts of issues that, you know, I find that are a priority for our, um, you know, the people. Um, but also, you know, more global issues, you know, uh, as a libertarian, you know, I'm a strong believer in ending war. And so right now we have engaged in wars that cost a lot of money, but we also, um, you know, cause a lot of issues around the world that, 
you know, we should start becoming unite um, globally and, and really, really uh, move towards peace. Um, those are the sorts of the issues that, you know, I find are, are a huge priority. But health and safety is another one. Um, you know, police and our environment and, you know, our health and, you know, being able to afford health care, you know, those are the sorts of things that um, are high priority in my, my platform. Okay. I was interested when you said you support workers' rights and you mentioned about workers not getting fair pay and having to work too much. How do you plan to solve that issue from a libertarian philosophy? Yeah, I think we can address it by um, coming up with ways to make sure that when you go to work, you're fairly compensated and that you can really trust into a system. Um, you, you can think of like our young people going to work and, um, you know, what's their minimum wage requirements? You know, what times of the day can they work? What's their appropriate amount of hours? Um, but also, too, you know, what's a fair minimum wage for someone who's, uh, uh, you know, working in management? And then those folks who have to work 60, and, 60 hours plus as a salary person, you know, at, at what point in time, you know, does it become fair compensation? Um, especially when you think about overtime and, you know, uh, the, uh, those sorts of, those sorts of issues. Um, but, you, you know, we really need to focus on, you know, what's the bare minimums and, you know, what's right. Uh, okay. The Libertarian Party might say, you know, uh, let it be free for all, but um, my candidacy is going to be, you know, for the people, and, you know, it's going to be one of my major focuses. Okay. So what do you think a fair minimum wage is? Now, it, it, people probably say it varies from place to place. Do you have a rough estimate that you think would be a good nationwide rough estimate? Yeah, I think for young people, it would be $12. Um, adults, okay. it would be 13 if you're going to be any sort of management, I think uh, uh, $16 an hour is fair. Um, but when we talk about salary, you know, that's going to be up to the business. But I, th I think if we can really focus on getting those sorts of numbers um, locally for our community members, I, I think that um, would be a huge benefit. Okay. So what is your strategy for this race? How do you plan to reach the voters and to stand out? from the other candidates, both within the Libertarian Party and with the general electorate? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, if you think about how to reach voters, um, it, it would probably cost $3.6 billion for a Libertarian to win an election. So um, when you think about the massive amount of money it would require, you have to start being a little bit realistic. Um, historically, though, uh, Libertarians probably get a war chest of about you know, three to four million dollars. Um, and so you have to be able to figure out how to utilize that in an appropriate way. Reaching uh, community members, though, you know, it, it needs to be a spark. And utilizing social media is probably one of the biggest ways that that can happen. Um, okay. But also getting the trust of our, um, you know, uh, the, our influencers in and out of social media and just talking with people like yourself and just really getting the word out, it's going to be highly important. I think my focus is going to be, uh, you know, targeting young people, working with young people and talking about okay. those issue, issues, um, really connecting with local groups in and out of our colleges, and really just taking a step back, going local, and really focusing on um, practices within social media and just really trying to use that as a tool. Okay. So what activities has your campaign done so far and what do you plan to do? Yeah, I think I think going to local events, um, conventions, really reaching out to people through social media, um, you know, speaking on podcasts, um, okay. getting getting in the articles locally, um okay. within communities. Um, those are gonna be one of the bigger outlets. Uh, most libertarian candidates don't actually start this early, and so I'm probably okay. one of the earliest candidates that um, would consider, and I think most libertarians right now are, are really trying to focus on getting people to come out earlier. Um, but the actuality, the conventions are going to be in May next year, so really the election cycle for the Libertarian Party historically is only going to be six months, and so that's going to be the big, big time where uh, the news agencies really connect with the, you know, the, the nominated candidate. 
um, those sorts of things. And that's when it really turns into hyperdrive in a sense. And so right now it's just about connecting and really working with our local libertarian groups and really trying to gain their trust so we can, so someone like myself can get their vote of confidence for the nomination. Yeah. So what do you face for ballot access and how do you plan to overcome that? Yeah, um, we have states like New York who are limiting ballot access. If you're not getting the right amount of percentages, um, you know, they're going three, now they're going 5%. Um, and so that really becomes a spoiler effect for elections. And so they're coming up with legislation that says, no, you know what? Um, if you don't have a certain amount of numbers, et cetera, you're not going to be considered on the, on the ballot. And so, just giving people that third choice is becoming an important um, part of our election cycle. Um, right now, I, you know, if we can come up with ways to really um, uh, connect with our legislators, um, it's important. But we're going to have to start getting people actually elected and, and really change the, the mindset of politics that way. And so um, it's definitely uh, a struggle. Um, you know, people like me, you know, promote ranked choice voting. And so it creates uh, a little bit of a less barrier to have libertarians elected because, you know, most people are going to choose um, their second choice as a libertarian candidate. And so there's barriers. It's been tough. Um, but we need the, the boots on the ground and people really focusing on understanding those concepts and really appealing to their legislators, especially when they vote. Sure. So you mentioned ranked choice voting. Would you say that would be the most impactful election reform, or do you think something like proportional representation or national popular vote, or what do you do you think ranked choice voting would beat any others, or is there something better? Yeah, I always I have a preference towards ranked choice voting. Popular vote, in a sense, um, the Democrats really uh, – love that idea because, um, you know, every election they have lost, they've won the popular vote. And so if you win the popular vote, you know, you're president of the United States. And so it's not necessarily my main motivation per se. Um, a lot of third party, um, groups like the Libertarian Party or, you know, in Colorado, the Unity Party, they use ranked choice voting when they, um, when they, when they have, um, you know, the, their nominations and stuff like that. And so it's been popular it's, and it's actually been beneficial, beneficial. And it, it, it becomes a, the elections become a little bit more interesting as well. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Let's hope that comes into place sooner rather than later. Yeah, exactly. So to get the nomination internally for the Libertarian Party, in, you said the convention is in May 2024. How are you planning to stand out from the other libertarian candidates? It might be a little bit tricky, um, in a sense. Um, the Libertarian Party really wants somebody to mold the party and really speak to the platform. And so um, it's important to understand those platform concepts at the national level and really uh, you know, be motivated to really speak to those issues. And so a candidate has to be really, um, mindful about their politics. And so it, the, the party itself could be a little bit more selective. And so I'm really hoping for that opportunity. Um, but I'm going to be real to myself and, and show myself real to the voters. And, and hopefully my, um, my concepts and ideas really appeal to the Libertarian Party as a whole. And I could have that opportunity. Um, right now, I've been meeting with like local groups, uh, libertarian groups, and so um, you got to start small. You got to work uh, individually with those county groups and at the state level, and go state by state, county by county, and, and really are, earn their trust. And so, um, right now, I've just been on social media talking about it, and speaking with people like your folks, like yourself, and um, just spreading the message. And so, hopefully, I'm heard in, in a positive way. Sure. So, for those in the audience who are running for office, maybe someday they may want to run for president. What do you have to do to register as a candidate for president versus other races? Um, how do you prepare yourself is the question? You know, how do you, how do you officially register as for a presidential candidate? 
what does one have to do? Um, you have to go to the FEC and you have okay. to fill out the the documentations. It, it it really is easy as that. And so basically, oh, okay. you just de- you just declare yourself. Um, go to the FEC. Uh, you'll find that I'm a candidate for the United States, and that uh, the year that I selected is the 2024 cycle, and um, my party pref- my my party registration is Libertarian Party. Um, but you have to register and vote as a libertarian, and so those sorts of things just connect, and then that uh, uh, makes you a candidate for uh, president of the United States. And so um, that's what folks are doing, uh, and uh, and that's basically the the way the way to do it. Um, one of the other minimum requirements is you have to be the age 35, and sure. so um, uh, United States Senate, for example, is age 30, I believe, and uh, uh, representative is. 25 and so uh you just have to meet those basic requirements there's literally no other requirements besides those um president okay. is uh, probably uh the united states citizen but um sure. that's so important citizen, basic but. Things, and then the someone registers at the fec site right yep exactly yep sure sounds good is anybody out there that is interested in that that's how you do it so joshua so I, okay. I was telling our audience if anyone ever wants to register for, for president, that's what they need to do. So, Joshua, how can our listeners support your campaign? Yeah, um, you know, like, like, follow, and share content on social media. Um, okay. You know, commenting, uh, I read those comments, and it, it helps influence my ideas, and it helps influence other ideas. Uh, you know, if you're able to share content and and, and uh, present ideas back to your audience, that's, that's also, uh, also very helpful. Um, but you also you can go to my website, joshuaforunity.com, and then um, do a monetary donation. So I thank anyone in advance for those donations. Of course, it's uh, greatly appreciated. Um, and it, it helps me reach and connect people in a different way as I travel to the United States and meet 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 folks at libertarian conventions and those sorts of things. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of things that that need to happen with uh, being able to have folks help volunteer and um, help process data, crunch numbers, work with multimedia, uh, those sorts of things. And so um, every little bit helps. And so I just uh, thanks thank you everyone right now and. Thank you in advance. Uh, definitely appreciate it. So, so if there's somebody in our audience who doesn't live in your area, is there? Can they volunteer for your campaign virtually? Oh yeah. Oh, definitely. Of course. Um, like even this this uh, this podcast show right now, you know, we need to be processed and uh, put onto YouTube, and so those are the sorts of things that folks can easily do. Uh, yeah. But content creation and stuff can happen virtually. Uh, you know, uh, flyers, uh, arra- calling and arranging meetings. You know, uh, right now I'm putting together a presidential debate forum. Okay. Um, trying to host it in uh, Florida, some probably somewhere in, in Orlando. And so right now we're going to have Republican, Libertarian, and a, a Democratic a Democrat candidates in a forum. And so if you think about the questions associated with that forum, connecting with those folks to get them out, um, the logistics associated with uh, creating the event, you know, those are the sorts of experiences that people can really, um, you know, uh, help out with. But it's also a good resume builder too, because um, organizing and um, being able to to do that is uh, is it's helpful to your career in the future, and it's uh, a good learning experience for for everyone involved. Good way to sell it, Joshua. We thank you for coming on this podcast today and talking about your campaign. Oh, you're quite welcome, and I appreciate your time as well. Sure thing. We wish you all the best in your campaign and also in all your future personal and professional endeavors. You as well with your uh, podcast. I appreciate you guys, and uh, thanks for your listeners as well for your time. Sure thing. Take care. Bye now. Bye-bye.